Hello class. Today I am going to read to you our next short story, which is called The Orphan Boy in your reading and literature textbook. Uh, please follow along with me while I'm reading. Um, you can just have your book open and be reading as I'm reading to you. Um, and I might stop a couple times, explain some things, uh, but please follow along. All right, let's get started. The Orphan Boy. The story is a folktale. We've already learned about folktales. You already know what that means. As he had done every night of his life, the old man gazed deep into the heavens. He had spent so much time scanning the night sky that he knew every star it held. He loved the stars as if they were his own children. He always felt less lonely when the sky was clear and the stars formed a glowing canopy over the plains. Tonight, he noticed, one of the stars was missing. Like a worried father, the old man searched the darkness for his missing star. Then he heard the sound of footsteps. Startled, the old man looked down, and there before him stood a boy. "'Who are you?' he asked. "'My name is Killikin,' replied the boy. "'I'm an orphan, and I've traveled countless miles in search of a home.'" So in case you don't know, an orphan is someone who does not have parents. Uh, maybe their parents um, left them, or maybe they died. Um, an orphan does not have parents. The man's eyes shone with excitement. "'I'm childless and live alone. I would be most happy to have you as a companion. You are welcome to live here as long as you want. And forgetting all about the missing star, the old man set to making a bed next to his own for the boy to sleep on. When he woke up the next morning, many surprises greeted the old man. Waiting for him in his, fav uh, in his favorite bowl was steaming hot tea made with lots of milk, just the way he liked it. The cows had been milked, the compound and the cattle pen had been swept clean, but Killikin was nowhere in sight. He had taken the cattle out to pasture. As you might know, that means taking them out, uh, into the, out into the field. In the evening, when Killikin returned, the old man was waiting. It takes me forever to do all the morning chores, he said. How did you do everything in time to take the cattle out to pasture by sunrise? The boy smiled a mysterious smile. The day begins at dawn, he replied. I get my energy from the first light of the day. He chuckled. Besides, I'm much younger than you are. The old man was still puzzled, but he decided not to ask any more questions. After all, Killikin had been a great help, and he was good company too. They spent the rest of the evening sitting quietly together out under the stars. Just before going to bed, the boy said, We're almost out of water. I'll take the donkeys to the spring in the morning. Good, the old man replied. While you do that, I'll look after the cattle. The boy shook his head. No, no, I'll fetch the water and take the cattle to pasture. As long as I'm here, I'll do all the work for you. It was the old man's turn to chuckle. Look, it takes two whole days to go to the spring and back. It takes another day just to load the donkeys with water. That's a big job for a boy your size. You can't possibly take care of the cattle if you're going to the spring. Again, Killikin looked mysterious. If you trust me, I can do it, he said. By sunrise the next morning, the boy had not only fetched the water, but had done the morning chores as well. The cattle were out grazing by the time the man woke up. When Killikin returned in the evening, the old man stared at him in silent wonder. His mind burned with curiosity, but something about the boy stopped him from asking questions. By and by, the rains fell and the land turned a glistening green. The old man's heart was full of joy. His face became brighter and his step more youthful. Killikin continued to amaze the old man with his strange deeds. But though he was curious, he asked no questions. In time, he regarded Killikin as the son he'd never had. The rains were followed by a drought. A drought means there's absolutely no water. It doesn't rain for a long time, so everything gets very dry. You can't grow crops and things. The sun hooked its claws into the soil, and a flaming sky burned up the grass and dried up the spring. Buzzards darkened the sky, waiting for cattle to die of thirst. The old man shuddered. He watched the circling birds and murmured, If it doesn't rain soon, we will be dead. No, we won't die, the boy said with a faraway look in his eyes. A little sparkle lit the boy's eyes. It's something I learned from my father. He had a hidden power over the drought, and he passed that power on to me. But it will work only as long as it remains my secret and mine alone. He told me never to reveal it. Suddenly, an urge to understand everything came over the old man. Please tell me, he pleaded. You can trust me. I won't breathe a word of your secret to a soul. Killikin shook his head. A secret known to two is no secret, he said. 
I must not tell you, and you must never seek to know. For the day you discover my secret will be the end of your good fortune. The drought worsened. The plains echoed with the groans of dying beasts. But under the boy's care, the old man prospered. That means that he became rich. Things were going well for him. More calves were born than ever before, and there was more milk and even a gr than even a growing boy could drink. But as the old man's fortune grew, so did his curiosity. Each day, his longing to know the boy's secret sharpened until he thought of nothing else. His face became clouded with worry, and he seemed to age more than ever. Unable to sleep one night, the old man sat by the fire. His shadow glared down at him from the wall of the hut. He watched as Killikin slept peacefully, and for the umpteenth time he murmured to himself, I wish he would tell me. I would give anything to know his secret. Suddenly a gruff whisper came from the wall. Why don't you find out? The old man was speechless as his shadow continued. So this is his shadow on the wall talking to him. Does that normally happen? No, right? Your shadow doesn't talk to you. It just, it just lays there, lifeless without words. But this is a folktale. Remember, sometimes there's magic in folktales, things that can't happen in our real world. <clears throat> you could have found out long ago if only you'd used your brains. Excited, the old man whispered back, what a fool I've been. Now, why didn't I think of that? Then his face fell. But I mustn't know, the boy. Forget the boy, snapped the shadow. How long will you suffer because of a silly little secret that a silly little child wants to hide from you? Besides, he doesn't need to know. You only have to be careful. For the rest of the night, the old man plotted and planned. He would find out how Killikin worked his wonders. He would. By this time tomorrow, the secret would be his too. The boy would never know. He would be sly as a jackal. When Killikin got up in the morning, the old man pretended to be asleep. He lay still on his bed and listened to the boy's movements as he did the morning chores. Then the hut became quiet as Killikin herded the cattle out. The old man crept from his bed and followed at a safe distance. The boy walked quickly with the cattle moving well ahead of him. When he was a good distance from the compound, he stopped. The old man scrambled for cover just in time. Killikin turned to look in all directions. Satisfied that no one was about, Killikin climbed on a rock and raised his arms. Instantly, the sun dimmed as a powerful glow spread down the boy's arms and through his body. But from his hiding place, the old man watched and what he saw next took his breath away. Suddenly, he was in, a midst, in the midst of a, mag, a magnificent waist-high grass, beautiful green woods and cool gushing springs. His cattle were drinking blissfully, their udders loaded with milk. A cry of wonder escaped his lips before the old man could stop it. Gilligan turned and saw him. For an instant, the boy looked into the old man's eyes. Gone was the trust they had shared. In its place was only sorrow. The old man threw himself to the ground with a cry of despair and covered his face as the boy exploded into a blinding star. As he rose quickly into the air, the sun gradually regained its sparkle and majesty. The old man stood up. Gone was the waist-high grass. Gone were the green woods and the gushing streams. Gone were the fattened cattle with loaded udders. There was only scrub land now, barren and drought-stricken. That means it's, it's dry, it's dead. Thin, scraggly cows wandered about the parched countryside, waiting for the rain that should come soon. Lonelier than he had ever been in his life, the old man plodded slowly home, waiting for him there, and his favorite bowl was steaming hot milky tea, just as Killikin had made it that very first morning. But the hut was empty. That evening, a lone star shone down from the west. Unlike other stars, it neither flickered nor twinkled. At dawn, ringed by the first rain clouds, it looked down from the east. The old man watched it in sad recognition. It was the star that had disappeared from the sky so many nights ago. The night that Killikin came. The star is the planet Venus. At dawn, it appears in the east as the morning star. At nightfall, it is the evening star in the west. The Maasai call it Killikin, the orphan boy, who is up at dawn to herd out the cattle after morning chores, and who returns to the compound at nightfall for the evening milking. So, in the story... Killikin is a star that came to Earth to help the old man. Now, that's another thing about uh, folktales. Again, something that isn't very realistic in our real world. Um, also, they will uh, explain things about the world that those people could not explain. Um, so, for example, this star that actually is the planet Venus, um, they saw it 
in the morning. It was the first thing up. It was the first thing down at night. So this story explains uh, that star coming to Earth as a, as a human. Um, this is a story from the Maasai people. You saw that at the end there. And actually at the beginning of your story, um, it says the orphan boy, a Maasai legend. The Maasai people live uh, in Eastern Africa, around Kenya, Tanzania, that area. Um, they are nomadic, which means they don't stay in one place, uh, but they follow um, animals around, herds of animals around. Um, and they're still around today. This is a very old story uh, from the Maasai people. Um, but it's their, their folk tale. Most folk tales come from a specific place or a specific culture. All right, so you have some other work to do uh, on this today and this week. Um, you can always rewatch this video if you need to hear the story again. Um, and I hope that you enjoy reading it later on this week as well.